Health experts link processed and red meat to an increased risk of cancer. But some in the meat industry are accusing them of being alarmist. Also this lunchtime. Good afternoon and welcome to the BBC News at One. Eating processed meat can cause cancer, according to experts at the World Health Organization. They've placed foods such as ham, salami and hot dogs in the same category as tobacco, and they say they should only be eaten in moderation. The risk is said to be small, but it increases with the amount consumed. Red meat, including beef, lamb and pork, is also thought to be a probable cause of cancer, although the evidence is more limited. The Meat Advisory Panel has accused the WHO of scaremongering. Here's our health correspondent, Sophie Hutchinson. Well, Sophie joins me now. Sophie, some people are going to be very worried by this. What's the message to them? Well, clearly there is concern when staples, food staples that people love and eat uh, many days of the week are considered to be linked to cancer. The World Health Organization has been very clear about this. It is now separating red meat from those pres processed meats such as bacon and ham, etc. Um, there is less evidence around the cancer-causing factors within just simple red meat like steaks. Uh, but, but the types of things that are causing cancer, they think, might be to do with the red pigment, if you like, the high cooking temperatures, or in the processed meat, um, some of the preservatives that they use, the nitrites and the nitrates. But clearly, everybody who eats these foods is not going to get cancer. This is a small risk, but it's a risk nonetheless. OK, Sophie, thank you. A powerful earthquake in northeastern Afghanistan has been felt across the region, killing at least 40 people in Pakistan and 20 in Afghanistan. Well, let's join our correspondent Shaima Khalil, who's in Kabul for us. And Shaima, what's the latest on the impact of this earthquake? This afternoon, the House of Lords could vote to either block, delay or kill off the government's proposals to cut tax credits, the benefits given to families and workers on low incomes. The government says any such attempt would be unconstitutional. It's estimated around 3 million families could, on average, be more than £1,000 a year worse off. Ministers say the cuts should be seen as part of a whole package of measures which include a higher minimum wage. Our political correspondent Eleanor Garnier reports. The reason why they're going along the constitutional track is because they've lost the arguments over tax credits. They can see what this is going to do to people who work hard but are poor and are about to get it absolutely in the neck. Well, let's join Vicky Young, our political correspondent at Westminster. And Vicky, what effect might the Lord's vote have on government policy? Well, it's very interesting today. We're getting some sort of mixed messages, really, from the government in many ways. We've heard from Downing Street this morning, the Prime Minister's official spokeswoman saying the policy is the policy and it's not going to change. And that's because Conservatives are very clear about all of this. They feel that just a few months ago in May, they fought a general election campaign. They won that general election. And a huge part of it was about austerity. It was about balancing the books and making it very clear that there would be billions of pounds in welfare cuts and they are absolutely furious at the idea of the unelected House of Lords trying to change this in any way. On the other hand, though, we're hearing from some ministers that George Osborne is in listening mode, and that's because this is the moment, isn't it, when the reality bites. For all the talk of austerity, in a couple of months' time, people will be getting letters saying that they are losing money. George Osborne is taking money away from people who have planned for it, and they're from people who are working. They are people who are on low salaries. How does that fit in with the Tories saying that they are the party of hard-working families. Now, Lib Dem and Labour peers I've been speaking to seem pretty confident that at least one of those amendments will get passed today, possibly the one which delays these cuts to tax credits for three years. And then George Osborne has a very difficult decision. Does he dig his heels in or does he carry on with these cuts? And the opposition, opposition of course, very likely to grow when people find out exactly what they're going to be losing. Vicky, thank you very much. Vicky Young there. And there's plenty more information. You now at least five people have died after a whale-watching boat sank off the coast of British Columbia in western Canada. 21 people were rescued, but one person is still missing. The 20-foot boat went down yesterday afternoon. The sea conditions at the time were reported to be calm. Frankie McCamley reports. 
And in the last few minutes, the Foreign Secretary has confirmed that it was five British nationals who died. Uh, in a statement, uh, Philip Hammond says, it's with deep sadness that I can confirm five British nationals lost their lives when the well-watching boat they were on sank off Western Canada on Sunday. And he says that his thoughts are with the family and friends of all those affected by this terrible accident. Well, the time is now quarter past one. Our top story this lunchtime. Now, leaders from Central European and Balkan countries have agreed on another 100,000 spaces in refugee reception centres for people trying to reach the EU. It's one of a series of measures approved at an emergency meeting in Brussels last night. Hundreds of police are to be sent to Slovenia and to Greece to help secure their borders. Last week saw nearly 50,000 migrants arriving on Greek islands. Our correspondent Ben Gagan reports. Well, last year, 31,000 people applied for asylum in the UK. Just under half of those applications were granted. So what about those who were rejected? Emma Glasby has been finding out what life is like for one destitute asylum seeker in Leeds. That was Emma Glasby reporting. Well, the Home Office told the BBC that the UK offers asylum to those in genuine need. It said that people whose applications have failed should leave the country. It did add that removal can be delayed for a number of reasons, including issues with documentation such as a passport. Well, viewers in Yorkshire and Lincolnshire can see more on that story tonight on Inside Out at 7.30 on BBC One. And afterwards, it'll be available everywhere on the BBC iPlayer. The man accused of the woman accused of murdering schoolgirl Becky Watts told police she was appalled and disgusted to learn her boyfriend Nathan Matthews had killed his stepsister while she was in the house. 21-year-old Shauna Hoare is jointly accused with her boyfriend of kidnapping and murdering 16-year-old Becky in Bristol in February. People have been warned to stop taking photos while standing on railway tracks after CCTV captured eight incidents of dangerous behaviour in one day on a level crossing in Derbyshire. Video footage at Matlock Bath Station caught adults and children taking selfies and even sitting down to pose for pictures on the tracks. Elizabeth Glinker has the story. Lewis Hamilton says his third World Championship win at the US Grand Prix in Texas last night is the most important of his career. He said his aim has always been to match the three titles of his childhood hero Ayrton Senna. He's the first Briton to achieve that since Jackie Stewart in 1973. Katie Gornall reports. England have just lost the second test against Pakistan. Time for a look at the weather now. Here's Stav Daneos. Stav. Thank you very much, Rita. Good afternoon to you. Thank you very much. Now, a reminder of our top story this lunchtime. Well, that's all from us. Now on BBC One, it's time for the news where you are. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.